So, hello. Today, I'd like to welcome Philippe Sergio, Director Inlay Sales, and Gustav Sandström, Senior Regional Sales Manager for Industry. Both are responsible for EMEA from, for every denizen. Today, we are talking about embedded RFID, sustainability, and new production plans from every denizen. And we are learning also something about very innovative products, about the organization of the teams and the focus, the focus uh, of the teams for, for sectors like healthcare, automotive, retail, and also special products. So I'm happy to have you here. You are heartily welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so yeah. let's start Thanks with a lot. simple let's start with the simple questions. Where are you located today? Myself, I'm uh, I'm located in uh, the very south of Sweden uh, in a city called Malmö, which is next to Copenhagen but on the Swedish side of the water. Uh, and I have a home office working uh, for the entire EMEA region. Right on my side, I'm located on the uh, very north part of the uh, country of Italy, so uh, really close to the uh, Swiss border and not far away from the Como Lake, so a pretty nice area, uh, you know, thanks to me. Yeah, thank you. We are broadcasting today from Lüneburg, which is a little tiny city nearby Hamburg, so in the middle of your locations, I think. Yeah, let's start with the first uh, question. So what is the outstanding about embedded RFID? Yeah, maybe I can uh, say a few words about this. So embedded RFID is really a part of the evolution of RFID. Um, and when we say embedded, of course, it can mean embedded RFID labels or inlays in any product, but we will we we are speaking primarily right now about embedded uh, RFID in within apparel uh, products or within apparel retail. And what does it mean? It means basically that we have an RFID inlay or label which is pu uh, put in a permanent position on a garment. So up till now or previously, uh, the, the approach has been very much that it's been mm, attached in a way that it can be taken off. Uh, it's been attached with a hang tag, for example, or a price ticket or, or similar or adhesive label. But with an embedded RFID uh, label, we put it in a permanent position. And this is creating a lot of very interesting use cases, I would say. For example, having the opportunity to return the product uh, and always making sure that the RFID label is there. It follows the, the, the garment uh, in a way, and it doesn't fall off like it can do with a hang tag. And, and there are other use cases too. Uh, for example, circularity uh, that you can retrieve information about the product later in the life cycle, uh, which would not be possible if you don't have it embedded. And that's something we will also uh, speak more about at the, uh, the wireless IoT. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, give me the chance to answer something about customers. What do you think that the customer of today, is he open? Is this customer already open for consumer IoT and embedded RFID? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I would say that uh, the customer in general is today is trying to make uh, uh, trying to consume in general uh, with, with a high degree of awareness. So seeking information about uh, his or her consumption and RFID uh, in general makes that possible. We have several examples of that in every Denison. And by the way, we also have um, our connected product, uh, connected product, product cloud platform uh, on the IoT exhibition. And, 
And that is also what we're demonstrating a lot there, that you can put the consumer in contact with a lot of information about the product. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, next question. Let's come to sustainability. So how is RFID connect to sustainability? Uh, I think I can answer also on that one. Um, in, in general, there are many layers uh, on sustainability. So uh, it, it also depends a little bit uh, what business we are talking about. But I would say that there are a few common factors. And one of them is really about reducing waste. So. Uh, Globally, around 8% of all inventory uh, is discarded, it's lost, or it's being uh, wasted. And the reason is primarily that the supply chain is not optimized. So you have an overproduction because you don't have enough visibility, but you also have uh, products uh, getting lost somewhere in, in supply chain. And the value of that 8% is more than 160 billion US dollar annual. RFID can create visibility of supply chain. It can help show where products are, how much is in transit, and actually improve the matching with the demand. So the visibility is just one out of many factors to reduce waste. There are others too, such as I just mentioned before that we, we want to enforce consumers with more data to make sustainable choices, but visibility is a super important uh, part. And if anyone is interested, I, I really recommend to go to the Avery Dennison website and, and search for something called Missing Billions. And it's a report that we have published uh, around exactly this uh, topic, how to reduce waste and what is the impact of that initiative. Mm. Yeah, thank you for these answers, which are touching also future topics. But with my la with my next question, I would like to know more about the situation today. So 2023 is a challenging year because the industry is awakening worldwide. Yeah. What is your forecast for the growth of business uh, uh, RFID? For, for the growth of the business RFID, yeah. So we, we see a, a strong continued growth uh, within RFID in general, even if there are always, like in, in all businesses, there are short-term fluctuations, uh, but the, the, the mid-term and long-term growth of RFID is definitely something we see uh, ramping up even. Uh, apparel is already, Mm, uh, a vertical which has been using RFID for a long time, but we see more and more volumes, more and more requests also into logistics, into healthcare, food, uh, beauty. So there are many uh, product segments and, and, and businesses that are now also adopting RFID and that, that continues to boost this growth. Um, I would also like to add that we also see governmental and, and institutional initiatives. So, for example, EU um, is uh, launching a, a, an a initiative called DPP, so Digital Product Passport, which is an ambition to have every single product around us with a unique identity um, in the future. And this will obviously further boost the need to have um, RFID. Yeah, thank you. Let's come to questions about our about every denizen now. Um, first of all, I would like to know something about every denizen as a full solution partner. What does that mean? So let me let me let me take this one on the uh, on the organization. So uh, this is basically meaning that uh, you can count uh, on our company, uh, you know, on every aspect of the uh, RFID, uh, let's say, applications and world. So, which means that uh, we could be supporting you uh, with really, uh, you know, uh, consulting uh, on 
the best product to use for uh, each type of different application. So moving from, uh, let's say, soft tax uh, with all the technologies, uh, but we can also add to this uh, uh, comprehensive range of uh, hard tax uh, uh, products and solutions, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, bringing you hand-to-hand uh, -hand into the animal identification uh, world. Another important aspect for the company is uh, you know, also the capacity to uh, customize uh, solutions for uh, specific uh, needs and requirements. Uh, I think this is really uh, one of the key focuses of our uh, R&D uh, department uh, on the solution side, on the RFID side. Um, as Gustav was mentioning uh, before, uh, in the last years, we have also evolved, uh, uh, trying really to complement and to extend uh, what we can offer to the market and to customers uh, by adding uh, the uh, Atma IO connected product cloud, uh, which is, uh, you know, allowing really to, uh, you know, create uh, uh, unique digital identities uh, for uh, all the items. Uh, which are around us. And then, you know, if you allow me to complete the picture, when it's about, uh, let's say, uh, Avery Dennison has an RFID, uh, you know, solution provider at 360 degrees, uh, I would like also to mention that uh, we have really a full set of uh, uh, marketing uh, experts, uh, either business or market development managers, uh, which are really specialized into specific segments uh, of the market, uh, which could be definitely supporting, uh, let's say, our uh, customer base and the market in general, as well as uh, our technical sales specialists, uh, which can definitely provide uh, on-field uh, and after-sales uh, support. Oh, thank you very much, yeah. Um, what are the key markets for every denizen? Well, we're taking a little bit uh, what has been uh, mentioned uh, earlier, uh, uh, you know, uh, this morning. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the apparel market is the uh, segment uh, uh, which, uh, where, you know, RFID started. It's the most uh, evolved uh, segment. Uh, it still represents uh, the majority of the uh, global business. But uh, the beauty is that uh, in two other segments, uh, the uh, RFID adoption is definitely lower. And uh, this is giving definitely opportunities to uh, expand and to grow in the future. So let's think about, uh, uh, you know, critical segments uh, like uh, healthcare or uh, food, uh, beauty, all the area of connected products uh, through different technologies uh, or even retail are definitely offering uh, a lot of uh, opportunities for uh, future development. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that brings me to the next question. Can you tell me something about the milestones of Every Denison in 2023, or do you have already plans for 2024? Well, you know, when it's about uh, milestones, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, I have uh, more than one in mind, but if I have to report uh, the main one or the, uh, the closest one to my heart, uh, this is definitely uh, the area related to uh, transparency and sustainability. Um, you know, I have to say that uh, especially in the last months, uh, we saw a uh, strong acceleration of all the initiatives related to this, uh, to this area. Uh, you know, for example, through the launch of the uh, Pure product portfolio, which is uh, our 100% plastic free RFID, uh, you know, range of uh, materials uh, where you have really uh, aluminum antennas, uh, which are uh, fully plastic polyester free uh, performances, which are really, uh, you know, uh, top ones. Uh, and, you know, by doing this, uh, uh, this product range uh, is contributing to uh, uh, really a relevant uh, uh, lowering uh, of the uh, carbon footprint uh, to the extent of uh, you know, between 70 and 90%. And it's also allowing to enter into a very important uh, theme, which is, uh, you know, the recyclability uh, of the uh, RFID uh, inlays uh, at the end of life uh, when uh, the uh, inlay is applied uh, on cardboard and paper. 
Uh, you also asked me about uh, milestones uh, uh, with an outlook on the next year, so on 2024. And again, I would like to underline that uh, the sustainability approach, uh, so not only products, uh, it's absolutely uh, crucial and it's going to become uh, more and more important uh, for, uh, for our company. Uh, so, you know, this is not only, as I said, about uh, expanding uh, the uh, solutions we can offer to the market in terms of uh, pure products, uh, but I believe that uh, it's also about, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you can also find, uh, uh, you know, well described in our website. Uh, so, you know, and it's all the area about uh, the sustainability targets that we have uh, uh, in every Denison as a company. So we are talking about... Uh, reducing the environmental impact uh, or advancing on circular economy uh, or, you know, uh, up to the point of creating a, a positive impact, uh, you know, from a social perspective. Yeah, thank you. Looking ahead, where do you envision every Denison in the next five years and with which, you know, which innovations can we expect? I would say that uh, I would like to reply to this with uh, three different buckets. So the first bucket is really the one related to uh, products. So we already heard about uh, uh, you know embedded solutions. We definitely foresee an expansion. So we will be having more on this. Uh, you know solutions that can be replying to uh, the different needs that the market is uh, highlighting. And I think that uh, RFID is going to become in general more and more uh, uh, a component uh, which is going to be characterizing uh, products uh, in the future. Then I would say that uh, always staying on the product side, uh, more and more sustainable uh, uh, products and solutions. Uh, this is based on uh, reduction of uh, waste, uh, material, emissions, uh, uh, we mentioned already the increase on uh, recyclability or compostability. Um, very important is to source uh, raw materials uh, in a more uh, and more responsible way. And this is what we are going to uh, definitely, uh, let's say, uh, see in the next five years more and more, as well as the recycled content uh, in the products uh, or, uh, uh, let's say, green, sustainable product designs, uh, and to terminate, I would say also life cycle assessment, uh, uh, it's really, uh, really key. So to determine and define uh, which is the impact uh, of a product, uh, uh, you know, uh, from a sustainability uh, perspective. And then, you know, to finish on the product side, I would say that uh, we definitely see, thanks also to the uh, evolution of the technology, so the sensitivity, uh, yeah, let's say, of the ICs in general, uh, smaller form factors, uh, are definitely um, going to come more and more into the play, allowing also new and exciting uh, applications. Then the second area is definitely transparency and sustainability. We already mentioned about this. This is absolutely crucial and key, and it will be key for the next five years. Uh, this will be uh, you know, uh, a continued driver of innovation. Uh, through, let's say, excellence into uh, manufacturing, uh, responsibility into the sourcing uh, of materials, uh, and a higher and higher focus about uh, the end of life uh, of products. And then I would conclude with the third bucket, which is about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, excellence in uh, sales and serving the market. Um, we aim to continue to be leading uh, with the overall offering into these spaces. Uh, through, let's say, the uh, production capacity, uh, agility, flexibility from a service standpoint, uh, uh, creation and expansion of local stocks, uh, um, competitive pricing. Uh, uh, so I would say that uh, our unique uh, uh, global manufacturing uh, footprint, uh, it's something on which we intend definitely to leverage more and more looking forward to the, uh, to the next uh, few years. Yes, thank you very much. Very interesting. Let's come to the next point, to the RFID and wireless IT tomorrow, 2023 in Wiesbaden. Uh, you explained already a little bit about your products there, about the booth, but, but let's uh, um, summer now everything. Um, what are you showing at the booth? 
which new products and which topics are you presenting in the lectures as well as in the speed lab? Um, well, we will uh, we could spend a lot of time uh, discussing, uh, but in, in in short, I really want to encourage everyone to come by our booth uh, because we have several different experts on the booth experts on on different verticals and business areas so take the opportunity come by and and raise your questions to us we we are there to speak about uh, the embedded solutions i mentioned we are there about uh, to, we are there to speak about industry use cases we have new launches uh, within the pure range. This is uh, our PET free RFID inlays. We are there also to speak about our high memory ICs, the new two metal rock, which is an on metal RFID solution and many other things. Next to that, we also touched very briefly on this. We actually have an expert from our connected product cloud platform, which is called Atma. And I mentioned this earlier that this is about improving transparency uh, for businesses, but also consumers. So drop by and we'll tell you all about it. Great summary. Thank you. Yeah, let's come now already to the to the last two questions so your personal opinion or your personal insights to this both question so what would everyday life look like uh, with wireless iot technologies in the future it's a great question uh, i think many many of us are thinking about that but to wrap it in in, in a very short consensus or or, or uh, phrase i would say that in the future the future day, every item around us will have a unique digital identity and its own digital life. That is my vision. Mr. Sergio, would you like to add something? Yeah, well, let's say, I think that uh, if, we, uh, if we think about, uh, you know, what Gustav just said and we uh, build a uh, farther on this also looking maybe at uh, the next uh, uh, 10 years so you know we are asking ourselves many times uh, you know where are we uh, let's say going to be uh, you know in the future i think that you know the process of digitalization is not something we can uh, stop and it's going to be definitely accelerating and uh, you know entering into our daily lives uh, more and more so i think that uh, to be honest, uh, uh, the future I see, it's definitely made by uh, multiple uh, and a growing number of uh, safe and seamless uh, experiences uh, that will be really driving our behavior as a consumer. Uh, so basically the way in which we uh, uh, you know, choose, uh, select uh, and interact uh, with uh, objects, uh, with a lot of uh, potential uh, advantages. Uh, and you know, and some of them, uh, um, you know, are definitely going to be, uh, you know, displayed at the wireless IoT uh, tomorrow exhibition. So I'm really encouraging everyone uh, to pass by and to, uh, you know, listen to, uh, you know, the great uh, stories we have to tell. Thank you very much for this interview with both of you. Thank you for your time and all these interesting answers. Yeah, we see you pretty soon in Wiesbaden. Thanks to you. Thank you very much.